Welcome to the second day of Vlogmas. What are we going to look at today then? I don't know. This is the video series where I research something new each day to do with the performing arts, which is my channel topic, and also to do with Christmas because it's Vlogmas. <laughs> Yesterday we had a look at Troika and Bach's Christmas Oratorio and briefly Missy and Snowell. I don't know what to do today. I've made some notes. We could look at some Christmas films or some more Christmas music. I'll show you. I quite like looking at music yesterday. Let's have a look. I remember looking uh, when I was a student at Schubert's Winter Ice. Now, not necessarily with a Christmas theme, but it's a winter theme. Let's start with Wikipedia and see what Wikipedia says about this. Why not? I know. Shame on me. Winterreiser. I'm learning a bit of German, maybe it means winter trip, travel, winter travel, Reiser. Oh, okay, we've got it here. It means winter journey, and it's the second of Schubert's two song cycles on Müller's poems. So he's worked with this poet's words before. The earliest cycle being Die schöne Müllerin. What does that mean? The beautiful, the fair maid of the mill. Because there's just a similarity to that poet's name. <laughs> Right, this is interesting because I'm doing currently a, um, a lecture series on the operatic voice. Both these cycles were originally written for the tenor voice but are frequently transposed to other vocal ranges. Very fascinating. Yeah, I quite like to sing these songs actually. Oh, that would be fun. Oh, I need singing lessons so much. I don't know where I read this but it was when I was like a, a kid like, or a teenager, I can't remember. Schubert is one of those composers who had lots of ideas really fast, quickly, I need to get them out. And, and that's why like songs were good for him because they were short and he could get his ideas out in one fell swoop. You have other composers like Wagner who can spend quite a while on one massive project, like the Ring Cycle, which is huge, for instance. But Schubert was like, write this, write this, write this. And I always kind of related to that a bit. And also, because it's funny, because he has that unfinished symphony, doesn't he? And I was like, either he didn't finish it because he just couldn't, like his ideas were like, move on to the next thing. He died before finishing it. Oh, he intended it to just be an unfinished symphony. I'm digressing. But I will say at this point, because, you know, I can't help myself. If you listen to the uh, melodies within the Unfinished Symphony, those melodies themselves are unfinished. I like to think he was making a point about things being unfinished, but oof, that's another video for sure. Back to Winter Ice. People have wondered why Schubert composed Winterizer. Winterizer? I don't know. Why should there be a reason? Oh, there is, a, there is a theory behind this piece, apparently. In Elizabeth Norman McKay's book, Schubert, The Piano on Dark Keys, Schubert was very sick. He had contracted syphilis. He worked on Winterizer as he was dying of syphilis. Winterizer is quite a sad, gloomy cycle. Right, so Winterizer is a very sad thing. Somebody's compared his Winterizer to the full scale tragic opera. Here we have the first page of the autograph score of Der Learman in A moll. <laughs> oh, it's so neat and cute. Look how, look how fancy. You can tell you use one of those pens. As we're looking at this score, just something that I learned during my compositional education, I don't know, years ago, but anyone watching who might be at that stage in their education might want to know. When you write the vocal line, you write the stems separated like this. You don't group them. They're all separated for the singer. Whereas here, you can see in the piano part, they're grouped. I guess it makes it easier to read for the singer because you've got words as well involved. So let's have a look at all the different parts of the Winterizer song cycle. And I remember actually learning about this when I did my undergraduate degree, that he's wandering the snow, all depressed and sad, full on. His love is in her house and he's looking at it. Yeah, well, there's a whole load of pieces in this. I don't need to go through them all. There's loads. Wow. Which one did I study? I'm going to get my notes out from my degree. One minute. I don't know which year I studied it in, so I just got my second year notes here. Let's hope it was in here. Oh, could it have been third year? Second year, here we go. Analyzing song Problems and Principles in Schubert's Winterizer. Oh, here we have it. Yeah, we looked at Einsamkeit. Check this out. That's the score, and that's my annotations all over it. And we have the poem by Wilhelm Müller at the back, Einsamkeit. Wie eine trübe Wolke durch heitere Luft geht. You don't want to hear me try and read it out in German. But let's have a look at what I've written. Okay, so we have notes here, right. I don't need to rely on Wikipedia for this episode. Not that I ever would. Right, let's look at Einsamkeit from Winterizer by Schubert. 
it's wintry, which fits the theme of, of Vlogmas because it used to snow around Christmas time. Let's have a look at a score of Ein Sam Kite. Ein Sam Kite by Schubert. It's loading. Hello, come on. While well, we're waiting for that to load. Ein Sam Kite by Schubert, score version score video. The piano bit here we've got something that's rather similar to a funeral march or a dirge. It's like word painting for treading, walking slowly and sad. This contrasts with what we looked at yesterday when we looked at Christmas music and Christmas cliched music. We don't have that here. We just have something cold and wintry and not Christmas themed. Anyway so let's have a look at the form. Now you can't really say anything definitively about somebody else's creation. You just can't because they came up with it. All you can do is look for clues and decipher what you think of the music and use it to make logical arguments about what, what structure it is, what form it is and all that sort. What is the form? It has three verses. We can say that. We can see that it has three verses from the text, from the music. That's quite simple to, to decipher. There's not enough contrast between each verse to say that it's a scenic piece, which would be something that would uh, definitely word paint and take you on a journey that really develops. It's very, um, there's one idea, one main image. I would say that it still does paint some picture. I mean, it paints a picture of his um, walking. Now, there's too much repetition in this piece for it to be called through composed. So we can't say that it's through composed. It repeats a lot. We can decide that it's a binary form, but potentially a modified binary. Uh, and apparently when I was learning this, when you look at uh, the structure of a piece, for some reason you don't include the intro and the postlude. They're just the frame of the song. So we have the introduction and the ending. That's just the frame of the song. The big picture is the song itself in the center. <laughs> so the structure of this piece, why am I so blurry? The structure of this piece is as follows. We have the introduction, which we can say is these bars here. Then we have section A, section A1, repeated, then we have B, section B1. But there's no real change of harmony until bar 14. Now, chromatic notes have been added in here, as you can see, to add in some pain. We have, we call this Schmerz in German. I think I'm gonna have to do a video on this. Now, you need to use your ears to establish the keynote. You need to know the difference between being on the dominant and in the dominant. And in this piece, he does a lot of teasing the ear. So you don't quite know where you are at certain points, but it's a tease. It's just a tease of the ear. And apparently Beethoven and Schubert are famous for doing this. <sighs> right. Oh, okay. And we had a little look at something called Ombra, which is more of a spooky thing and should really be in, in a video series on Vlogtober, if I'm honest with you. Ombra is like slow, sustained, reminiscent of church music. The use of flat keys, especially in the minor, angular melodic lines, chromaticism and dissonance, dotted rhythms and syncopation, pauses, tremolando effects, sudden dynamic contrasts, unexpected harmonic progressions and unusual instrumentation, especially involving trombones. Why? Oh, I just made that up. I got that from White Rose E-Thesis Online. Clive McQuellen, 2001. Let's have a look at the poetry now. So we have the start. As a dark cloud drifts through clear skies when a faint breeze blows in the fir tops. Thus I go on my way with weary steps through bright joyful life alone, greeted by no one. Alas that the air is so calm, alas that the world is so bright, when storms were still raging I was not so wretched. <laughs> Okay, so here we have a, a lovely, bright, calm, wintry day. The protagonist is tortured. They would rather it be stormy because that would match their mood and maybe when it was stormy they weren't even so wretched. How ironic. I think that's what it means, the latter. How ironic that when it was stormy they were feeling fine. They go on the way with weary, weary steps. We hear that. There's a lot of word painting in this piece. You just hear the weary steps trudging through the snow in that dirge-like thing that I mentioned. That's pretty much it. I guess that's the video. Thanks for watching day two of Vlogmas. We had a look at Winterizer, which was pretty miserable if I'm honest with you, but it was wintry and it's winter. <clears throat> There's a lot of snow in this piece. It's quite a nice song as well. Learn to sing it. I'll see you in the next one. Let's do something happier. I'm so sorry <laughs> that day two had to be so miserable. <laughs>